Today, we're going to use Burp Suite to show just how easy it is to break into a fake user account which doesn't use proper brute force protection on this episode of Hackbyte. Burp Suite is a tool that allows ethical hackers to explore web applications looking for flaws, bugs, or other interesting finds. And today, we're going to learn how to use it in order to exploit a bug in brute forcing protection. Now, in this scenario, we want to break into a user account called Carlos, but the website that we're trying to break into has brute forcing protection enabled, meaning our IP address gets banned for one minute every time we try to guess too many passwords. Now, in this example, we're going to find out how we can bypass this protection when it's not implemented properly. And to follow along, you'll just need a free PortSwigger account, a copy of Burp Suite Community Edition, and a web browser. Once you have that, then we can get started. This project is sponsored by PCBWay, who offers amazing PCB manufacturing to quickly and easily bring your PCB projects to life. Check out PCBWay.com to learn more about their PCB, 3D printing, and CNC services. To follow along, you can go ahead and go to portswigger.net and then check out the Academy. And under that, you can also see the All Labs segment. Today, we're going to take a look at the brute forcing example. So we're going to go to the broken brute force IP block. Check that out. And if you are logged into your free Portswigger account, then you should be able to just click on this to access the lab. I'm going to open it in a new tab so I can keep some of these things open and go over them. But basically, it's going to open up this unique vulnerable web application. And what's cool about this is the password is different on every one. So I can't just tell you the password because it's going to be different every time we do this. If I click on my account, then we go over to this login form. And this is really what we want to start testing in Burp Suite. So I can see over here that our objective here is to find the flaw in this web application so that we can brute force the password of someone named Carlos. And of course, we have a a valid login here so we can study what it looks like to log in and maybe take advantage of something there. We also see we can have several candidate passwords and we're going to use these to attempt to break into Carlos's account and one of these is the correct one but every single time you load this lab it will be a different one so if you're following along you'll need to do this yourself you can't just copy my answer and I think that's really cool. Okay so let's go ahead and open up Burp Suite. And I begged for a Burp Suite professional license, which means I am able to uh, use this, which is really cool. But um, I'm going to go ahead and start up uh, a temporary project. Click Next, use the defaults. And then in general, uh, if you have Burp Suite, the community edition, then that is totally fine here. Um, it will just take a little bit more time in order to get started. So first up, let's go ahead and open up a browser. This will open a new browser window. And what we're going to do next is go over to Firefox, where I'm going to take the URL for this login page in uh, our now Burp Suite window. That should load. And we can go over to Burp Suite Professional. And we're going to click Intercept. So now Intercept is on. And anything that goes through here should be first intercepted by Burp Suite. So first, I'm going to put in our valid password. So I'm going to put in uh, Wiener as the username and Peter as the password. And I'm going to click Login. And if I go over to Burp Suite, I should see we've now intercepted this. We can see the username Wiener, password Peter. I'm going to forward this and any additional requests that come through. And that should be pretty much everything I need to do this lab. So I'm going to go to the HTTP history and I'm going to look for the post to the slash login URL endpoint. And if I scroll down here, I can see, yep, uh, username Wiener, password Peter. And then we have a response, HTTP uh, 302 found and a redirect. So it gives me a uh, session cookie, which says, hey, this is, uh, this is Mr. Wiener over here. And then it lets me proceed to the slash my account page. All right, cool. So we know what it looks like for a normal login. And we can see here, my username is Wiener. How wonderful for me. So over I can go back to the intercept. I can turn this off. I'm going to go ahead and log out. And let's take a look at what happens when we start messing around with this. So first, I'm interested in this post request because this is what gives me access to trying to log in. So I'm going to send this to the repeater so I can repeat this request and see exactly what happens. So let's go ahead and submit another valid 
request, we get this back. And I can see, yep, I get the same result. This is what happens when I successfully log in. So let's mess this up. I'm going to try to log into my own account with a bad password. And if I send this, I see that I get a problem. It, it loads something else. And I can see here it says incorrect password. So now the question is, can I just brute force this? Is there any protection built in? Uh, if I copy this string, incorrect password, and paste it into this match uh, searching form, then I can go back and send basically lots of wrong requests and see how many guesses I get before something bad happens. So I'm gonna send this. We get a match, so it's the same page. We're gonna send it again. It's incorrect password again, we get a match. So we get at least two. Then we're gonna send it again and zero match. So what changed? Well, down here, we can see that this says, you have made too many incorrect login attempts. Please try again in one minute. So wow, that is seriously gonna slow down our, our uh, brute force attack here because if we can't log in more in more than 60 seconds, if we can't just continuously blast requests, this is gonna take a really long time to get through our list because this list over here that was provided to us um, in the lab passwords is like a hundred different passwords long. So we are gonna have a trick to do this. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these passwords and I'm gonna copy them and I'm going to put them in a file. Oops. Okay, well, let's just say I, I already copied them. And here we go. So they're copied. <clears throat> I'm gonna go into terminal. And then right now I'm in a folder called burp suite. I'm gonna type ls. And I can see we have burpsuite.sh and burpsuite.txt. So let's cat burpsuite, uh, sorry, burplist.txt. And we can see it's the exact same list that we had from the lab. Okay, so we've copied this over. So about now our timeout should be done and we should be able to submit a valid password pair. And if I send this, we should get our 302 found. Okay, cool. So what are we gonna do next? Well, let's see how many incorrect passwords we can get away with if we sandwich them within a valid login, our own login. So let's say we have Peter and then we have an invalid password. There's one. Okay, we get the one match, so incorrect password. Let's do Peter again. I'm gonna send it. We get 302. Okay, that's good. So I'm gonna send a wrong password. Send it we get one match. All right, so far so good. Gonna add Peter, this is a valid login again. So we're sandwiching the invalid request. Okay, oh, so far so good. So now if this isn't working, basically if, uh, if sending the valid login isn't resetting the brute force counter, then this will fail and we won't get a match. But look at that, we get a match right here. And in fact, provided I keep doing this forever, flip-flopping between a valid login and an invalid login, I can keep guessing passwords as long as I want. So, okay, but if I sat here and did this in intruder, or sorry, in the repeater, then this is gonna take way too long to do it manually. So let's go back to the target, or rather the uh, proxy here. We can grab this login request, and this time we're going to send it to the intruder. So the intruder is for running attacks, and you can see it will automatically select the session cookie and the username and the password as variables that it's going to try to modify. And in this case, I'm just gonna delete it around the session because I don't want that. I really wanna focus on the username and the password. So I'm going to change the type of attack from sniper to pitchfork, which is a, a kind of dramatic name for running two different payloads at the same time. One of them against position number one and one against position number two. So if I go to payloads, then I can see that I have two different positions I can set, one and two, which represent username and password because those are the fields I've defined right here as my positions with these kind of squiggly S's. So the next step here is I need to load in the payloads. And what needs to happen is I need to sandwich valid logins with password guesses. So here's how we're gonna do it. I got tired of trying to sandwich these together and I went ahead and wrote a little bash script. So let's take a look at what this bash script looks like. I'm gonna type ls and then I'm going to nano burplist.sh. So what this will do is it will take that burplist.txt that I created just a second ago by copying and pasting all of the lab passwords and it is going to insert the username 
uh, or rather the password Peter every other line, meaning we're going to be able to use this to sandwich in our valid lo login requests with invalid password guesses. And then in the second line, we're going to create a username, username list and add Carlos and Wiener 100 times to that list, alternating back and forth. So we're basically going to create the two lists that we need for this attack by running this bash script. And I will link this on the YouTube uh, video in case you want to use this little trick yourself, because I did not want to sit there and create this password list manually. So, all right, I'm gonna sit back and through the power of bash, I'm going to run this bash script and create my two lists. Okay, so if I type ls, we should have two lists now, and if I cat username, I can see we have a list of usernames between uh, Carlos and Wiener, and, uh, and Carlos being the one we're trying to break into, and if I cat burp list Peter, I can see we have uh, all of our password guesses with Peter uh, kind of interspaced every other line. So that's exactly what I needed for this attack. So for the first one, for the username, I'm going to go to load, and then I'm looking for burp suite. Okay, here we go. And then I'm going to load up username.txt, and there we go. This is all done. So we have starting with Carlos, going to Wiener, Carlos Wiener, Carlos Wiener. So we're logging into our Wiener account in order to reset the brute forcing protection against Carlos's account. Very sneaky. So let's go to payload number two. We're gonna go to load, and we're going to select burp list Peter. So this is all of the password guesses. And you can see the payload count is 200. So we have 200 of these, and we also have 200 of this. So all of our payloads now match. The last thing I'm gonna do is go to the resource pool and I'm gonna create a custom resource pool because I find this actually does it too fast if you have Burp Suite Professional. If you don't, then uh, it will be throttled anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. So I'm gonna set maximum concurrent request to one. I'm gonna set delay request, uh, delay between requests to 500 milliseconds. And then let's go ahead and run this. I think everything should be set up. As you can see, we're ready to send this request over and over with the username swapped out. Sometimes it's gonna be Wiener, sometimes it's going to be Carlos, and um, sometimes it's going to be Peter, sometimes it's going to be our password guest. Let's start the attack and see what happens. So as these come in, we can see that the uh, we're not getting our uh, brute force protection kicking in. So this is successfully running. If I wanna go up here, we can see what we're looking for is a 302 that has the word Carlos in it. So let me click up here. I'm going to say I want to see none of the 200s. I wanna see a 302 that has Carlos. So let's apply this filter. And as soon as this hits on the correct answer, we should actually just see this pop up on the screen because we properly filtered out everything that is not matching what we're looking for. So this attack is going to run. And when I say that this takes a really long time in the community edition, I am serious. The way that it throttles it, I think is a little bit lame. So if you want to just go ahead and ask them for the professional version, um, you need to use a business email, but if you have one available, then uh, it's often pretty easy to get them to say yes, and using this is a lot faster. But if you're just using the free edition, it should work just fine. It might just take some time. So let's let it run. Okay, there we go. On our 165th guess, we found out that Carlos's password was love. So let's go ahead and apply this and finish up the lab. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of our attack because we have the information we need. And I'm gonna go back to the repeater, oops, the repeater here, and I'm going to input Carlos's username and then the password that we found. And if I send this, then we should get the cookie that we need to log into Carlos's account. So I'm gonna right mouse click, go to a request in browser in original session, or actually a current browser session, session we'll do that. Click copy, and then I'm gonna go over to my uh, Burp Suite browser. I'm going to paste this in, and it should forward the request that has the cookie allowing us to log into Carlos's account. Let's see if it redirects properly. And there we go. We were able to defeat this lab by taking advantage of a flaw built into the brute force protection, allowing us basically unlimited guesses at Carlos's password. 
As we saw in today's demonstration, a web application that doesn't properly implement features like brute force protection can end up leaving users completely vulnerable to these sorts of attacks. Fortunately, ethical hackers can earn money by reporting these bugs to bug bounty programs and make the web application safer for the users that rely on them. That's all we have for this episode. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below and we'll answer them live every Tuesday on our Q&A session on the Security Forward channel. I'll see you there. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.